What's up guys, this is Splattercat and welcome back to the Nerdcast for yet another adventure in Splattercat's Indie Shorts. Today, as you can tell, we're going to be taking a look at Beast Boxing Turbo, a throwback homage to the old days of Punch-Out, Super Punch-Out, and so forth. If you were anything like me as a kid, Punch-Out was an endless source of both frustration and timeless victories. For me, I can remember the first time I beat Bald Bull completely clearly. It was one of the most amazing moments of my NES career, and it's very rare nowadays that you come across a game that is as equally challenging as some of those NES games of old. Now, Beast Boxing Turbo by Good Hustle Studios comes out of the woodwork and says, you know what, let's go back to that. And so the controls at their core are pretty simple. The gameplay is the exact same as it was back in the day. You start out as a low-ranked nobody throwing random jabs and punches and you move your way on up the rankings until you reach the championship facing this game's version of Mr. Dream or whatever you want to name him. So because I've started my career, all I can do is show you some exhibitions, but that's going to give me the opportunity to show off the gameplay a little bit and let you get a feel for how things unfold. So we're going to click continue here. And so I'm going to go to Exhibition because I've been stuck on the character who's after this guy for at least three or four hours now. And I've been, I've been banging my head against a wall just trying to get a hang of him. Now I can beat Harvelis fairly consistently, but the guy after him is something else. And so we're just going to run through some of the earlier fights in the game so that I don't give away any of the spoilers. And also so I just don't look like an idiot because let's face it, my old man reflexes are nowhere near what they used to be when I was a kid. I remember being able to duck punches like crazy in Mike Tyson's punch out as a child, just reflexes like greased lightning. And unfortunately, my reflexes are a lot more like a weighted lead brick at this point. And so let's go ahead and we'll fight Pigless, who's the first fight. Every single time, it'll do this little animation where it runs you through the various leagues that you've advanced through. And once we get into the fist fight, we'll talk about how things go. So round one, let's do it. And I'm just going to get moving. Now, pressing WASD helps you move. So left and right, and then S right here allows me to block. If you look up at the top left of the screen and the top right, it'll have my health and my power and my opponent's health and power. Now, your power is how much you can block and punch. It's basically your stamina. When it runs out, you can no longer jive around the ring and you can no longer throw punches or block. You just basically become completely gassed out. If you've ever watched a UFC match, you know exactly what happens when somebody's gassed out. They tend to get yoked pretty well. So you can alternate your punches. Jabs are just left and right clicks. So I'll show you a couple of those. Just work this guy a tad. And there you go, so that was left and right clicks. Now, there are some variations on the punches you can take. If I hold left down, which is, if I hold down A, I'm sorry, I get kind of caught up because I use a controller sometimes. So if I hold down A and I press the right click, I'll throw a hook. Alternatively, if I hold down D and I press the left click, I'll throw a left hook. If I hold up and I press left or right click, I'll throw uppercuts and I actually just took a punch right there like an idiot. And let's work this guy real fast. And this guy is nothing compared to what you're going to go up against later on. This kind of pig Adolf Hitler looking guy. I guess he doesn't have like, he just has like the Adolf Hitler shaped head. He doesn't have the little pencil mustache or anything. So I don't know why my mind instantaneously jumped to that. Now you'll see that my gloves are on fire right now. If you look at the bottom left of the screen, when you land consistent punches over and over and over again, that bar starts to fill up. If you take a hit, it is instantly depleted. And if you charge it up all the way, you become endlessly staminized, or you have endless stamina. You can basically throw punches and block forever, so long as your gloves are on fire. And let me throw a couple punches into this guy there. Oh, I gassed out. Never mind. So as you can see, I'm moving a little bit slower. Things get dimmer. And let's see if I can get myself charged up. If you run out of power, I believe your bottom left meter recharges as well. And so he's going to charge up a hook there. And then there we go. So now we have flaming fists of fury. But if we get punched, we lose them like you saw right there. And we'll just finish this guy off because he's no match for us. This isn't the most entertaining gameplay you could see. We'll jump into some of the harder fights in just a minute. Now your health does restore, as is common in fighting games. Every time you take a hit, a little bit of your bar becomes red. But until that red reaches the point at which you are completely depleted, the green will start to refill back towards the red. And so each time you take a hit, you get some health that is not replenishable. But the remainder of your bar is replenishable. The storyline of this game is also something pretty unique because it actually does have a storyline, whereas many games would just be like, dude, you're a boxer, just go with it. Why do we have to explain it? 
This game, on the other hand, gives you a storyline in between, like in between matches. You will actually have rivals. Each character has their own personality. Like you've got showboating people who are only in it for the money. You've got people that box for their spirituality. You've got people that are basically just berserkers that like to hurt people. They're just absolute psychopaths. And so you get a little bit of storyline between each fight. And so let's fight Polyp now. Which <laughs> God, there's a there's a name that your mother would give you if she truly loved you. She'd name you Polyp. Polyp Johnson. And so now this guy is, <laughs> we're beating up a guy with glasses, I'll put it like that. And so, <laughs> how fair could the match be if I'm just yoking a guy with glasses? As a guy with glasses, I can tell you not that fair. And so, <laughs> having kickbox when I was a kid though, games like this are always endlessly entertaining to me. I'm a big fan of Fight Night and all of those games. Basically anything that focuses, oh, he's doing a special attack. So what you'll see is a lot of the mobs also have special attacks in the true vein of Super Punch-Out. The first time you see them, they're going to come out of left field sometimes. And I will tell you, you are absolutely, some fights, there's not a chance in hell you are ever going to win them the first time around. You've got to take your time, you've got to pay your dues, you've got to learn your patterns. This game is very much a game of pattern recognition. And the first time you fight an enemy, he's going to be coming at you from every direction. He's going to hit you left, right, left, right. You're going to be trying to juke, but it's usually just a mess. After you fought him three or four times, you should be able to jump back in though and take him out. The game does use an upgrade system, which we'll take a look at after this bat. I, yeah, I think after this match, we'll take a look at that. And then the game also throws little hangers into your overall plan, or it throws a fish hook into your foot, if you will, every now and again, by throwing variables into the fight. And actually, let me just yoke this guy out real fast. There we go. Oh, we got the fiery fist. And knocked out. And so let's go into the upgrade system here, and we'll take a look. Now, your character can be both upgraded in both his equipment or her, I'm sorry, your character in this game is a human female and she's fighting against monsters. That's also kind of, this game is very much Monster League meets possibly Punch-Out because you're fighting monsters but you're a human in a monster disguise and I'll show you what I mean in just a second. There she is. And so as you go through, you'll earn money, which is up here at the top right of the screen, and you go to this upgrades section. And now this is one of those things that I'm not sure if I like or dislike because deep down I want this to be like a game of skill, you know what I mean? I want to be my razor, thin reflexes up against my opponents and because there's stats involved I sometimes find it hard to realize whether I'm winning because I just suck at the game I'm sorry whether I'm losing because I just suck at the game or whether I'm losing because I haven't upgraded my character enough now there are a number of stats for your character which you can upgrade in any particular order as you earn money you just kind of go to the gym and you pump them up you have attack which is obviously how much damage you deal with your punches it makes your jabs and your hooks and everything else a lot more powerful you've got your defensive rating which is basically just how much damage you so cut off the top every time you get hit without blocking. You've got speed, which affects how quick you can move back and forth across the ring and how quickly you throw your punches, so that's a pretty important stat. You've got your health, no explanation needed there. It's how much of a beating you can take before you eat the mat. Power affects your stamina, as I was showing you. It increases your energy points, makes you able to block more, makes you able to throw more punches, lets you combo a bit more before you gas out. And then block affects how much damage is cut off the top when you take a hit while blocking. And so this one is really important because there's certain things in this game that you're just going to have to soak the hits. Much like with Super Punch-Out, there are certain combos where you actually have to sit and go tap, tap, tap. And after that third hit, you've got to know to swing out with your right real quick. There's these patterns that you'll start to recognize as you play the game and from that regard it's very very reminiscent of those old nights spent in front of that black and white TV in my case for you guys you may have had a color TV but for me we had like an attic with a little tiny like 12 inch black and white TV and I can remember playing punch out on it to this day the other way in which you can increase your character stats is by going to the gear menu here in the gear menu, you can actually sort, and there's gear across different tiers. And now this gear has varying effects. Some of it is heavier and increases your defense or your power at the cost of your speed. So there are kind of... There's penalties is, I guess, the only way to put it. There's penalties towards certain stats in exchange for others. Now you can sort by type. And so if we go to totems, these are just little magical items you like to keep on you that you take into combat, your little good luck charms and so forth. And you can see here the chicken totem. It gives you 10% health. Or right here, there's the beast paw. It gives you 15% more coins after a win or a loss. Now, if we go to the other gear, there's the shoulders. You can see that I've got the initiate's shoulders. I've got the boar shoulders. They increase my attack by 2% and my defense by 2%. And what's really cool here is when you look at the ragdoll over here or the paper doll character, it actually adds the gear on as you upgrade and get cooler. So if you're into that World of Warcraft MMO type feeling where when you upgrade your gear, you want to look more badass and you want to look more accomplished, this game definitely scratches that itch. It was to my huge 
huge surprise and my massive enjoyment the first time I equipped a new piece of gear that it actually changed. We can also upgrade like our gloves. We can upgrade our pants. There's all kinds of things that you can add to and they've all got little bonuses and things that they help you out with. As a particular bonus, when you upgrade your gloves, they actually change in combat. So when you're in your first person mode fighting, your gloves will actually change into the ones that you have equipped. So that's another way in which you can advance your character. And since this actually has penalties and bonuses, I actually support this system a lot more than the training system. But in any case, most of the time from what I can tell the game is just viciously difficult and it's basically my skill level that's sabotaging me. So there are multiple skill tiers. You can play the game on easy or on normal. But being the gamer that I am, I absolutely hate it when the game is like, hey man, it looks like you kind of suck at this game. Do you want to tone it down for a little while? To that I say, hell no my friend, keep throwing it at me. I just want to keep taking my licks and paying my dues until I figure out this fight. And so to show you how the fights get a little bit rougher, we're going to fight Harvelis. And this is going to be the last fight that we do. And hopefully you'll get a feel for how the fights start to quicken up. So this is the first fight with which I actually hit a brick wall and was like, okay, this guy's actually pretty tough. And this is what I mean by the storyline right here. You'll get this little bit of chat beforehand, this trash talk, if you will. And then your trainer here, the actual first guy you fight, Pigloss, after you beat the hell out of him, he decides to retire and become your trainer, which is pretty cool. And he gives you little tips and things as you go through. So Harvelis is known for his lightning fast jabs. And so it may be hard for me to maintain a commentary stream while doing this. And now I know for a fact he does those five jabs and then he goes into a weakened state. He also does a little bit of dirty boxing. He throws headbutts and things of that nature. And so there's a nice little combo from him and we're going to throw a couple punches on him. And I know I can interrupt that right there. And we're almost at a combo. He threw a dirty headbutt right there. But we can interrupt that as well. And now we got him with the flaming punches. I'm just going to jab away on him since he can't physically block that many attacks. And since he's going to keep on just throwing dirty headbutts and things of that nature, I'm just going to keep it easy. Oh, I lost all my energy again. I don't pay attention too well when I play this game. That's one thing that I've noticed. And so we'll put a couple jabs on him right there. And the game does reward you for comboing in a certain respect. And he's going to do a hook right there. And then we'll light him up with a little combo right there. Two jabs and a hook. And then we'll give him the same thing right there. Oh, and he blocked our combo. Damn. And so let's get in on him a little bit here and just dig him out a tad. Get a little bit, just play around. Now I wish the game had a little more strategy. I would like to see battle damage if they ever do a second version of this game. And I had to tell you the one thing that I would love to see, battle damage. That was always my favorite thing from playing, say, Fight Night. Is that if you opened up a cut on your opponent's head, you could actually exploit that just like a real boxer would to try and deal extra damage to your opponent. Oof. And then he's going to do that same little combo right there. And hopefully by now you've noticed that he does have not a pattern, but he has a set. He has a move set that he's going to throw at you. And so down he goes. And now the second round is going to throw a modifier on us. And what I mean by that is that now he's guarding against jab combos is what it said at the bottom left. That means he actually takes way less damage from jabs. Now that doesn't mean that jabs are absolutely worthless. In fact, feel free to throw those out there because it just means that when he blocks, he's going to be able to reduce the damage a lot more. And so you just got to make sure you really do have an opening before you go in with a jab combo. Additionally, it means he's going to try and juke it a lot more as well. But if the opening's there, the opening's there, and you can still drill him with a good one too. And since I'm a big proponent of the jab, I've always felt like the jab is like the bread and butter of the boxing artillery, if you know what I mean. That's always the first thing when I went into kickboxing. That was one of the first things they taught us is like, learn how to jab because... You know, that's what you're doing right there. That's how you're probing the opponent's defenses and so forth. And I am just getting worked while I'm chatting here. And so that is unfortunate. And so my power is low once again. I can't block, and so he's just going to tear me a new one. I'll try and get a couple in right there. Get a couple in right there. And then let my energy come back. And he's going to throw a headbutt. And so I'm going to get right up in his business and let him know, Sir, we do not support dirty boxing in this ring. No siree. There'll be none of that 1920 stuff in here, dropping your forehead and so forth. Now, I think we may have him. Like I said, I can beat him fairly consistently. And the one complaint I would levy about the fighting is sometimes it really encourages you to spam jabs. The fact of the matter is that your hooks and so forth are pretty slow, and while they do hit for twice as much as a jab, I feel like they should probably hit for about three times as much because the... The reason to throw the hooks, if you're only getting double damage, well, I can throw three jabs in the amount of time it takes me to throw one hook. And so that's 
one of the little complaints I would put about the game. But all things considered, the game is pretty short, so you're going to want to keep that in mind. But it's only $4.99, so then again, you can't expect a ridiculous 40-hour journey through the boxing pugilism ring out of a $5 purchase. I think that Good Hustle themselves has done a pretty good job of creating a game that recreates that old feeling from the Nintendo and the Super Nintendo and I very much feel like the game is skill based which is the hardest part to nail how do you balance the equipment versus the upgrades and so forth without the game either becoming too easy or relying too much on the upgrades for the game to progress it seems to balance it pretty well and there will be times when you'll reach a fight and you'll say okay my jabs are obviously too weak here I need to spend some time training but in other cases, you may just steamroll through an entire bracket. So the game is fairly good. It's by Good Hustle Studios. So if you're in the realm for some nostalgic pugilism, punch throwing, the sweet science, then I would definitely recommend checking it out because everything about the game is pretty charming. It's got a lot of things going for it. It's got a unique art style. It's got a female protagonist, which I think is pretty cool for a boxing game. It's not really what you expect to see. And at $4.99, I think that Good Hustle has done a pretty good job making the game an absolute steal. So that being said, my name is Splattercat. Thank you for joining me in this short look of Beast Boxing Turbo by Good Hustle Studios. $4.99 on Desura. I'll put all the applicable links down below so you can check it out if you're interested. Thanks for joining me, and I'll see you guys next time. Take care out there, everybody.